Hi, I'm Kitty Faldi. We continue our series of episodes featuring books that have been banned or challenged around the country. This time, it's the Newbery Award-winning graphic novel, New Kid, by Jerry Craft. Books in Katy, Texas, were pulled from library shelves in 2021 after a parent petition complained that it contained harmful content about critical race theory. CRT examines how racism has shaped laws and public policy in America. Writer Jerry Kraft says he had never heard the term and had to Google it to find out what it meant. In another case, an African-American parent in another part of the country objected to Kraft's use of the word Oreo, a derogatory term used to describe a person as black on the outside but white on the inside. She said she didn't want her child to be exposed to the term. The challenge in Katy, Texas was dismissed, and the book was returned to library shelves. So what do you think? Give a listen to the Book Club for Kids podcast discussion of Jerry Craft's New Kid. It's the Book Club for Kids. It's the Book Club for Kids. It's the Book Club for Kids podcast. Hi, I'm Kitty Feldy. This week, we explore the Newbery Award-winning graphic novel, New Kid, by Jerry Craft. And we asked Jerry why a graphic novel. If I could do any kind of book that will get even a reluctant reader reading it, that just does my heart some joy. Our readers at Randall Highlands Elementary School in Washington, D.C. explain that words and pictures go together. If you have books that tell pictures, you might not understand all the things in the book, but if you have words in the book, you'll be able to understand more about the characters and more about what happened in the story. Our celebrity reader is the fabulous actor Gary Anthony Williams. And I do a lot of cartoon characters. I mean a lot of cartoon characters. I mean I do a lot of cartoon characters. <laughs> this is the Book Club for Kids, the show where kids talk about books. And we'll tell you how you can be on the show a little later on. But first, let's meet our readers. Hello, my name is Alea. Hello, my name is Amari. Hello, my name is Elijah. And we're all fifth graders at Randall Highlands Elementary School in Washington, D.C. New Kid is about a new kid who goes to a new school and his mom forces him to go to his new school while his father wants him to go to an art school. What's the school like? Well, it's a biracial school. It's not many, you know, kids like him in the school, but he still likes the school because he has nice friends, but he still doesn't like the school because he wants to really go to art school. The art school just fits him more better. But his mom put him in Riverdale Academy. She thought it was a good school for him because they had a lot of good things in school, lots of things that he would, well, his mom thought he would like. But his dad wants him to go to art school because that's Jordan's passion and he likes to sketch. And besides the art, what else is it that um, doesn't seem like a good fit initially for Jordan? Well at his new school that his mom wants him to go to. He doesn't have very many friends because he's the new kid and some of the characters are really nice to Jordan while some of the other characters feel like they can bully him because he is the new kid. Let's say tuition doesn't matter. You could go anywhere you wanted to go. Would you want to go to a neighborhood middle school or would you want to go like Jordan goes all the way across town, in this case across the Anacostia, maybe up to Northwest to some fancy pants school. Which would you choose if it was up to you? If you go to a normal school in your area, it was it's not going to be lots of opportunities. But if you go to a school far away, then you'll be able to get lots of more opportunities, lots of more sports playing at your school school. I feel like a neighborhood school is better because you wouldn't have to drive or walk that far to to go to school. And because it's a neighborhood school, you can bond with people more because you can say, oh, let's be friends because we live right next door to each other so we can hang out anytime. There's a lot in this book about people making assumptions about other people that we sometimes find out don't turn out to be true. Like what? In the book, Alexandra, which 
is the puppet hand girl. Jordan and other of his friends assumed that she was just a crazy girl that wears a puppet hand and she's over 12 years old and she wants to wear a puppet hand, which is for three-year-olds. But they didn't know that she actually was a hero. She saved her brother from getting burnt. That's why she wears puppet hands over her hands to hide her scars. Well, people assumed that they f that since he was the new kid, people would feel people felt bad for him. So I assumed that they probably wanted to go make friends with him, so he at least had some friends, and the bully couldn't bully him as much as he could if he had no friends to stick up for him. Well, let's hear a little bit from the book about our hero Jordan's take on his new school. Our celebrity reader is the versatile actor Gary Anthony Williams. Man, I don't know about you, but I think I'll pass on going outside. It's like 30 degrees. I know, right? It's freezing. We can just chill here. About time we talked anyway. So, what do you think of the amazing Riverdale Academy Day School? You know, I don't really know, Drew. I mean, I like some things. How about you? Well, I won't say I hate it. Hey, Jordan, are you coming? No, I'm going to hang out here. Oh, okay. If you want to go with, I'm good, Drew. Finish. It's just that I've been here two months and people still don't really talk to me. But you're one of the stars of the football team. I get lots of high fives and good game, bro. But it doesn't really go past that. And it probably doesn't help that I beat out Andy for the QB job. True, but you probably don't want to be his friend anyway. Yeah, what a tool. Who's your guide? Some guy named Roger, and he showed me around the first day and then stopped. So what's up with Ms. Rawls always calling me DeAndre? I know, right? Some kids even called me Mari a few times. See, those are the things that bother me. Like, whenever a class talks about slavery or civil rights, everyone stares at you, right? And financial aid? I even got stared at when we talked about minority partnerships in business. Ugh. So, do you ever tell your parents how you feel? It's just me and my grandmother, and I don't want to worry her. You know, that generation doesn't like to complain. For real, my grandpa never complains. She says that in order to become successful one day, I need to get used to being a fly in the buttermilk. A fly in the... Wow, I never heard that before. If we weren't smart, we wouldn't have gotten in this school in the first place, right? Right. Then why do they make it so tough for us? We don't dress weird. We don't use a whole lot of slang they can't understand. We're not aggressive. I think you just described Andy. <laughs> I did, didn't I? Ring! Well, Jerome, we'd better break this up before they think we're starting a gang or something. You got it, Demetrius. I'm glad we finally got a chance to talk. Later, dog. DeAndre. Drew. I really don't think it's nice to call Jordan a dog. I didn't really. It, it was just a joke. He's a human being, not a dog. And I think it would be nice if you apologized. And I think it would be nice if you apologized for always calling me DeAndre. Excuse me, young man. Besides, Andy calls people dog all the time. Why don't you ever say something to him? And I'm not sorry because Jordan knows I was just playing. But I'll tell you what I am sorry for. I'm sorry I ever came to this stupid school. Man, that sure escalated quickly. So talk to me about telling a story with pictures and how that compares to telling a story with words. In other words, this is a graphic novel, so you're able to do some things with pictures that you can't do with words, but then again, you got fewer words to tell the story. So how does it work? Well, if you have books that tell pictures, you might not understand all the things in the book, but if you have words in the book, you'll be able to understand more about the characters and more about what happened in the story. Yes, there may be fewer words, but the pictures better describe the setting and the places and the characters. And they have, and in the pictures, they sometimes have thought bubbles so you know what the characters are thinking about. Describe the difference between Jerry Craft's pictures and the sketches that Jordan makes that are also in the book. His pictures in the books are really different from his books because he makes the characters look very fictional, but in Jerry's craft book, he makes the 
pictures look very real and realistic, like real life. Jordan's pictures aren't really in color, so they don't so they don't feel as vibrant when you see them and you don't typically feel them as much as you would as they would be if they bring color. Which character do you think you're the most like? Well, I think I'm most like Jordan because when I go to a new school, I'm probably going to be like afraid and kind of shy because I don't know, I mean, I don't know anybody there. I'm probably going to be Alexandria because she really likes to meet new people. And the new school I'm going to, I went to that school before, so I'm really going to be excited to meet new friends at the school. I'm really not like all of them because I'm really different. But I love making friends, and I want to make friends, but at the same time, I'd be scared to make friends, too. Does this book remind you of any other book you have read? Maybe not even a graphic novel, maybe, or a movie, or a television show. Does it remind you of something else? Uh, yeah, it reminds me of a TV show also called Henry Danger. It reminds me of that because he, he was enjoying his life before, but now he wishes that he never became a superhero and now he was a normal child. Mm, well, I feel like this book reminds me of kind of like a Journey B. Jones book because they're both friendly and they both have friends that they can turn to when they're in trouble and to have fun with. So Jordan's passion is art. What's your passion? My passion is art too because I really like to draw and I really like to make characters because it's fun to do. And she's showing us off some of her sketches here. Are those your friends or just? No, I just drew them. I want I'm, my passion is to go to college and be uh and study business because I really want to be a businessman. I'm really good at it and I'm really good at planning. My passion is like a layer, uh, art and build, building buildings. And so when I grow up, I would like to be an architect. Well, let's talk to writer and illustrator Jerry Kraft. I assume you guys have some questions for him. Why did you make the book? You could have made the book a movie. Well, for I think the one reason why a graphic novel is so good is one, it gets kids reading. You know, there's so many movies and YouTube and TikTok that kids can sit and veg out with. But I like things that build their reading skills. So if I could do uh, any kind of book that will get even a reluctant reader, so-called reluctant reader, reading it once or twice, or I've had kids talk about they read the book 10 times, that just does my heart some joy. Although I have to say there is a movie that is in the works. So you will get that, but after you've read all three new kid books over and over again. So there. Jerry Craft, I want to ask, is this book based on your real life or somebody that you know? New Kid is based, it's kind of a combination primarily of my life, but also a combination of my two sons. So the part of wanting to be an artist, growing up in Washington Heights, even that building where Jordan lives is the building where I grew up. Wanting to be an artist, my mom and dad did not want me to be an artist, so they did send me to school in Riverdale. It was called Fieldston, not Riverdale Academy Day School. And each day I had to commute back and forth into two different, completely different worlds. So that was my life. A lot of the little things, little incidents, actually happened to my sons, you know, getting their names confused, uh, going to school where they wore pink salmon, <laughs> you know, things like that. Uh, why didn't you go outside at recess? Mom is too cold, you know, like that kind of thing actually happened to my sons. And then there is a lot that is just made up to be entertaining. I wanted to ask you and how Jordan really wanted him to be in art school I hope you may make another book on how he was going to go if he did go to art school. Huh. So a new kid alternate universe, what if he had gone to art school? That's kind of interesting. It would definitely be a whole nother world. 
you just kind of never stop being Jordan Banks. You're always the new kid trying to fit in somewhere. So, you know, the whole thing is just, you know, find who you are and be true to that person. And you, you'll be a lot happier than trying to fit in someplace where you don't belong. Uh, one of my favorite quotes, and I wish I knew who it was by, but was, be go where you are celebrated, not where you are tolerated. I wanted to ask you why you also created the book, and I feel like it was a different purpose. Oh, my goodness. I had many purposes. One is, you know, in my entire life, I've never seen black characters that were iconic, that made the level of a Harry Potter or a Wimpy Kid or a Percy Jackson or a Charlie Brown. Like, they really haven't been. You know, now superheroes and, you know, even though Black Panther has been around for decades, but the Black Panther movie and the Into the Spider-Verse movie in the last few years. But as far as just regular kids, because, you know, I wasn't a reader growing up. Like I read comic books, but I didn't like books because a lot of the kids of color, it was always about struggle and sadness and misery or it was historic. And that just wasn't a good introduction into reading on my own. Okay, so we are coming to the hard part of the show, which is when we ask people to tell us their favorite book and why they love it. Uh, my favorite book is Diary of the Wimpy Kid. Well, one of my favorite book series is probably The, Ke- the Creepy Cafetorium. It's really fun to read, and it's kind of like, a, an audio book so you can listen to it. My favorite book is The Favorite Birthday Cake because they're fairies and they don't use their magic to make the cage. They do it from scratch so they really have lots of lots of time on their hands but then when the birthday is in a couple hours they don't have enough time to make icing because they forgot so they made it out of their magic and it didn't turn as well. It's a very fictional book, and it, I like animated fairies and magical books. My favorite book is called Tight because it's like it describes my life and how my and how I was I was brought up uh, and how down my everyday life is and how it goes. What about you, Jerry Craft? Got a favorite book? My very favorite book may be Bud Not Buddy by Christopher Paul Curtis. But Not Buddy is about a little African-American boy. And again, it was not about the big three, slavery, civil rights, or gangs of police. It was probably one of the first times that I saw those two shiny stickers on a book. And I didn't know what they were. So what I would do is when I would go back to the library, I was like, hey, you got any more of these books with these little stickers on? Little did I know that that was the only book ever to win both the Newbery Medal and the Coretta Scott King Author Award. And many years later, that I would be the second with New Kid to win both of those awards. Hello, everybody. It's Gary Anthony Williams. Uh, I do TV and movie stuff. And I do a lot of cartoon characters. I mean a lot of cartoon characters. I mean I do a lot of cartoon characters. <laughs> uh, so my favorite book is a toss-up. I love Douglas Adams' book, The Restaurant at the End of the Universe. It's so creative and it's like nothing I would ever think of. But then again, my second or equally favorite book is a Dr. Seuss book called Marvin K. Mooney, Will You Please Go Now? I read it to my son. I read it to me. I also like to write books and poems and poetry. So this one is a definite favorite. I don't even know why I love it so much. Anyhow, that's my favorite. I, actually, those are my two favorites. <laughs> I've got two. We'll have a list of everybody's favorite book at our website, bookclubforkids.org. And if you would like to be on the show, simply have your teacher, parent, or librarian send us an email to kitty at bookclubforkids.org. That's K-I-T-T-Y at bookclubforkids.org. And we will send you all the information, and we would love to have you on the show. Thanks this week to our associate producers, Austin Silver and Chad Francis. Brandon Baker composed our theme, and Emma Stein-Kellner designed our logo. 
Thanks this week to our writer, Jerry Kraft, and our celebrity reader, Gary Anthony Williams. And thanks to our readers this week at Randall Highlands Elementary School, Alea, Amari, and Elijah, and thanks to their librarian, Malaya Pickett. We have lots of free reading tips to get a kid to pick up a book, graphic or not. Check out our website, bookclubforkids.org. And if you haven't already done so, check out our other podcast, The Fina Mendoza Mysteries. We are working on Season 2 based on the book State of the Union. But in the meantime, give a listen to our special Christmas episode or our two-part episode that explains the January 6th insurrection to kids without scaring them to death. That's The Fina Mendoza Mysteries wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm Kitty Feldy. Thanks so much for listening.